Hey, good morning, guys. Welcome to Monday Morning Leadership. Thank God it's Monday, right? We're covering number 10, Initiative. You won't leave home without it. And we're covering the 21 Indispensable Qualities of a Leader by John Maxwell. So join us as I go through number 10. You know, Conrad Hilton said, success seems to be connected with action. Successful people keep moving. They make mistakes, but they don't quit. Those are words of wisdom. In the book, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, John Maxwell points out that leaders are responsible for initiating a connection with their followers, and I'd highly recommend you to read that book if you hadn't. But they also must look for opportunities and be ready to take action. Guys, you know, one of the things I've learned about success is you can learn all you want, you can read all you want, you can go all the, to all the seminars, etc., but at some point, you have to take action and that's what we're talking about here so what qualities do leaders possess that enable them to make things happen well let's look at four from this chapter number one he says they know what they want it starts about you got you got to know what you want you know no one can be both indecisive and effective you know as napoleon hill aptly noted he said the starting point of all achievement is desire okay if you're going to be an effective leader You've got to know what you want, right? If you don't, how is anybody going to be able to follow you? And that's the only way that you'll recognize opportunity when it comes. Secondly is they push themselves to act. Again, we're talking the verb act. There's an old saying, you can if you will. You know, initiators don't wait for other people to motivate them, okay? They know it's their responsibility to push themselves beyond their comfort zone. You know, the comfort zone really is, I call it the growth zone. Comfort, you know, the uncomfortable zone is the growth zone. You've got to get out of your comfort zone to make things happen. Because if you don't, it's going to stay the same, okay? And one thing about that, they make that their regular practice, okay? President Theodore Roosevelt, one of the great initiating leaders of the 20th century, was apt to say, there's nothing brilliant or outstanding in my record except perhaps one thing. I do the things that I believe ought to be done. And when I make up my mind to do a thing, I act. And i got to say thumbs up on that 100% there. Okay, number three, they take more risks. Okay, when leaders know what they want, they can push themselves to act, and they still have one more hurdle, and that's the willingness to take risks. And I would probably say, we've heard this said before, you know, nothing risk, nothing gained, or nothing ventured, nothing gained, but nothing risk, nothing gained. If you play it safe all the time, you know, where are you going to go? So you've got to have the willingness to take some risks. You know, proactive people take risks, right? You've got to take your foot off the base and start moving ahead. But one of the reasons good leaders are willing to take risks is that they realize that they recognize there's a price for not initiating too. You know, remember, you you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take, okay? And number four, they make more mistakes, right? The good news for initiators is they make things happen. The bad news is that they're going to make lots of mistakes doing it. You know, in fact, IBM founder Thomas J. Watson recognized that when he remarked, the way to succeed is to double your failure rate. And, you know, that sounds counterintuitive, you know, especially how we're brought up and schooled, isn't it? But, you know, my mentor, Calvin Becerra, says, and he's adamant about this, he learned nothing from his successes, but he learned everything from his failures. Wow. Hear that again. He learned nothing from his successes, but everything from his failures, guys. We're not taught that in the world. We're taught that it's wrong to fail. You've got, you know, you got to get an A in class. You know, everything's got to be perfect, guys. The world we live in isn't per perfect, and people that are successful realize that, and they're willing to take the risk and make mistakes to get ahead, okay? So now, even though initiating leaders experience more failure, they don't let it bother them. you got to just brush it off. You know, in fact, they learn from their failures, and one of John Maxwell's uh, follow-up books was fail forward. You fail forward. So let's reflect on this right now with some questions, okay? Ask yourself, are you an initiator? Okay, are you constantly on the lookout for opportunity or do you wait for it to come to you? And then are you willing to take steps based on your best instincts? Or do you endlessly analyze everything? And I got a comment on this that, you know, that's 
paralysis by analysis. You can't get off of something and onto it because you're constantly analyzing. And people that are doing that don't really have a lot of success because they're just paralyzed by trying to analyze something, like figure it out to the nth degree. Guys, if you, guys, if you do that, you're never going to get anywhere. You're just going to be stuck, okay? In fact, the late and former chairman of Chrysler, Lee Iacocca, said, even the right decision is the wrong decision if it is made too late. Okay, think about that. When was the last time that you initiated something significant in your life? If you haven't pushed yourself lately and gotten out of your comfort zone, you might need to jumpstart your initiative. So here's some suggestions to help you improve your initiative. Change your mindset, right? Everything starts in the mind. If you lack initiative, recognize that the problem comes from the inside, not from others. You know, do risks scare you? Are you discouraged by past failures? You know, that's still something I have to deal with. Do you not see the potential that opportunity offers, right? And then find the source of your hesitation and address it. You won't be able to move forward on the outside until you can move forward on the inside. And that starts with your mind, your thinking. And then don't wait for opportunity to knock, right? Opportunity doesn't come knocking at, at the door. You know, let's just be real. I've never had anybody come to my door, ring the doorbell, or knock and say, hey, I've got this great opportunity for you. I just need you to, you know, sign this up and you're ready to go, guys. It doesn't happen. You've got to go out and look for it. And I also have to say, you have to recognize an opportunity. It might not be something you're expecting. What I'm doing right now is not necessarily what I was looking for, but by far it was the best opportunity that I had seen, and I'm taking initiative and acting on that. Okay, so take stock of your assets, your talents, your resources, okay? Doing that will give you an idea of your potential. And sometimes, again, stepping out is a way to help you engage your potential. So now spend every day for a week looking for opportunities. Where do you see needs, okay? Who's looking for expertise that you might have? What untracked group of people is practically dying for what you have to offer? You know, offer opportunities everywhere, guys. This is America, right? And there's a lot of opportunities. And then take the next step. It's one thing to see an opportunity against another thing to do something about it, to act on it. Someone once observed, everyone has a great idea in the shower, but only a few people step out, dry off, and actually do something about it. So pick the best opportunity that you see and take it as far as you can. And don't stop until you've done everything you can to make it happen. Guys, thanks so much for joining me today. You know, if you got value out of this message, please feel free to hit the subscribe button. I'd appreciate that. And you're also more than welcome to connect with me on social media. Have an awesome Monday today, guys. Bye-bye.